she was playing outside and then she came into the house and said, Mommy, you say Daddy is, is uh, in prison because he is fighting for uh, the black people. I am saying it is true. Things went horribly wrong. I fully agree with that. I never thought and never claimed that it is my personal title in any way because I, was, I didn't give it to myself. It's, it's the masses of this country I threw stones with uh, when we were fighting and uh, I'm one of those who engaged the enemy physically as well and very proud of it that I did what I did underground and I was part of those who brought down uh, the regime. Africans require, want the franchise on the basis of one man, one vote. They want political independence. For seeking democratic rights for the black majority in South Africa, Nelson Mandela was jailed in 1962. It was then the world heard for the first time from a young woman, his articulate and even then charismatic wife, Winnie. Our leaders called on President Botha to remove violence, to free all those who have been imprisoned and to allow the return of all those who have been driven into exile. To unban the People's Organization, the African National Congress, to dismantle apartheid, to allow free political activity so that the people may decide who will govern. We call upon the world to accept these demands. The apartheid regime could separate them but not break the bond created by marriage. Winnie Madikazela was born in what is now the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. She came to Johannesburg fresh from the country. She graduated as a social worker and immediately started working for the poor and dispossessed, the people who were to form her power base and her keenest supporters in later life. I dealt mostly with children. I handled the worst of our malnutrition cases. I dealt with hunger, with poverty directly. I was involved with my community at grassroots level. And it was one of the most painful things for me to be in touch with the reality of our country's problems. Mm -hmm. The rife unemployment, the poverty of the people, and the fact that there was no way of changing those conditions other than changing the whole status quo. There were socioeconomic problems of a depraved society. To bring about change, Winnie joined the leading black liberation movement, the African National Congress. And the ANC had already started rallies of civil disobedience to fight apartheid. Its leader, a young lawyer, Nelson Mandela. In Johannesburg, everybody was talking about this man. In the evenings when the factory workers came from work, they would sing freedom songs and invariably all these freedom songs were about Mandela. The factory workers sang so affectionately of this man. When they talked of better wages at work, they would say, Mandela will get us better wages. He seemed to be the solution to each and every worker's problem. Just about everything they wanted to complain about to their employers they would mention this Mandela and the African National Congress. Winnie was working at a Soweto hospital when a fateful phone call came through. One day, I was at work at Barakwanath Hospital and I got a call from a man who introduced himself over the phone as Nelson Mandela. Uh, he said he wanted to uh, see me and discuss certain issues with me. I was petrified. I was so shocked at uh, receiving that call. 
Um, I wondered what I had done. Um, then on the appointed day we met and it transpired he wanted me to help raise funds for the then treason trial. The white apartheid government had been rounding up members and charging them with treason, including Nelson Mandela. That is how I met my husband and the relationship between us grew and it was no longer just the relationship of a social worker, attorney, who was involved in the treason trial at the time. Winnie came to visit us before she was married to Nelson. So she came as a very young woman, very much in love with Nelson, carrying photographs of him as a boxer in the ring, actually boxing, very proud of his physical powers. That was my first meeting with Winnie, a very young Winnie. Charged with treason, Mandela went into exile. My husband was never there when both children were born. He was either in prison or out gathering information about their treason trial. I never even as much as heard him address a single meeting. He never discussed anything political with me. I'm not his political product, actually. I've never been, I never had an opportunity to be one. It is the African National Congress that has made me what I am. It was, in fact, the Women's League that uh, organized the anti-pass campaign. Winnie had become a leading figure in the ANC. But then came Sharpville, when the apartheid regime showed how far they were prepared to go to stop the struggle for civil rights. At Sharpville, police fired into a crowd of unarmed demonstrators, killing 69, including women and children. Meanwhile, Nelson Mandela and other accused on trial for treason were ultimately found guilty. Only the strength of world public opinion prevented the death penalty. Instead, they were given life. Part of my soul did go with him. My husband has been fighting for the liberation of the African people, for the working harmoniously of all the racial groups in this country. I shall never lose hope, and my people shall never lose hope. In fact, we expect that the work will go on. Winnie continued where Nelson left off, trying to overthrow the white apartheid regime. She and her family were harassed, even brutalized by police. She was arrested in 1969 and held in solitary confinement. This her moving testimony. When they detained me, I had just been to a heart specialist. I have a heart condition. And the security branch knew that. They knew I had been to, to the doctor. They knew I had been to a heart specialist. And I think they particularly arrested me then because of that knowledge. Uh, with the hope that uh, perhaps the condition would worsen in prison and that whatever happened to me would then be attributed to natural causes. <sighs> the cell in which I was held at the beginning was so small that if I stretched my hands, I touched both walls. I could barely exercise. In, the, in this cell, all I had was a bottle, a plastic bottle with about uh, five glasses of water, a homemade uh, sanitary bucket, and three blankets, and a size I met. That is all, besides what I was wearing. Being held in communicado um, is one of the cruelest things any human being can do to another. About a week after I was held, I was transferred to a 
a condemned cell. A cell, a, a condemned cell means uh, a cell that usually holds uh, prisoners who are going to be executed. In this condemned cell, there were two grill doors besides the prison door. To this day, the memory of that bunch of keys, the clicking, the noise they, they would deliberately make in the stillness and solitude of uh, a prison life. You, you actually felt they were hitting the inner core of your soul. They never switched off the light. I had this floodlight, night and day. I lost track of time. This particular order who always brought my food would open the cell door and I could hear someone outside putting the food down. And uh, she would stand right at the entrance to the cell. They would then take the bucket, the sanitary bucket, and turn the lid upside down and put your plate of food on that. And she would stand right at the cell door and kick the food in, kick it into the cell. The mind finds it very difficult to adjust to such solitude. It is such utter torture that I, I could feel that um, my mind was, was so tortured with lack of doing something and not communicating with anyone, that um, I would find myself talking, talking to the children. I would think I am thinking about them and actually find myself in the end conducting conversations with my children as if they are with me in the cell. It becomes so difficult to keep saying with absolutely nothing to do that I would actually hunt for ants if uh, I had an ant in the cell or a fly then I would regard myself as having company for the day when I was given anything if anything at all it was the Bible one day this sunny pool stood at the cell door and flung the Bible at my face and he threw it and said there you are pray pray so that your God can get you out of this cell while in solitary Winnie was interrogated by police colonel Swanipo he was the one who murdered a lot of my people behind bars he was actually the horror of Pretoria Central I was interrogated right through day and night for seven days and seven nights. Uh, as they changed the teams, uh, Swanipool would rub his hands and say he is waiting for that moment when they shall break me completely. By the time they interrogated me, um, I, they, they knew everything. They knew uh, all about uh, my political activities at the time. And the African National Congress, of course, was a band organization, which meant that whatever political activities I was involved in at that time were underground uh, political activities. There was nothing they didn't know. They had managed to break um, a few of those they had interrogated before me. The body devises its own defensive mechanisms. I didn't know it was such relief to faint, for instance. And during the only moment I ever had any rest from the intensive interrogation and intensive questioning, where your, your, your mind just loses track of everything, 
uh, while during those uh, fainting spells. They were so relieving. I could recover. And uh, from each fainting spell, when I came round, I felt a little refreshed to face more and more interrogation. On the seventh day, I started urinating uh, blood and the body was swollen like a balloon. Um, I don't know the medical explanation for that. Whether it's because of sitting in, in, in one position uh, for days and nights right through. But uh, my legs, for instance, were as if they were just poles that were not part of my body. I could actually feel the weight so swollen so odim as they were, that I found it difficult to stand. And um, that didn't stop my interrogators in any way. I don't remember when, how I was brought back to the cell. I found myself just there on Sunday. Uh, in the end, the fainting spells were much more acute. I think as the body was beginning to give in um, to that type of brutality prior to my detention, I knew that as a mother and as a social worker, um, life, a human being, was so sacrosanct that I could never on my own lift up a finger against any human being for ideological reasons. But what I went through, that personal experience hardened me so much that at the end of my interrogation, looking at my interrogators and what I had gone through, I knew that as I sat in that cell, in that cell, if my own father or my brother walked in dangling a gun and he was on the other side and I had a gun too in my hand in defense of the ideals for which I was being tortured, then I would fire. The security branch had made me the soldier at heart I am today. In part two, Winnie and the Soweto riots, her joy at Nelson's release, and life in the post-apartheid era, the so-called mother of the nation's reputation badly tarnished with allegations of corruption and murder. There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world, kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. It's been a great year for agribusiness. With our weather and the amazing range of soil available to us, the fallow lands are birthing their magnificent potential. The Central Bank of Nigeria, under President Buhari's administration, is spearheading this progress, and everyone is getting in on it. The local farmer on the Anchor Burwas program and the international investors taking advantage of the new policies geared towards easy foreign investment, stabilized exchange rate, and FX market. The harvest is green and lush, and we are just getting started. Come, 
Invest in Nigeria. Discover what the green in our flag really stands for. Nigeria, ready for business. An initiative of Greenfield Assets Limited. The best way to predict the future is to create it. There's a special breed of achievers out there that call tomorrow's people the highly creative ones who live in the future. They imagine what will be and strive to make it happen. They are bold. They refuse to wait for the future. Tomorrow bends and conforms to their ideas. At Access Bank, we share the same sentiments. We've been able to grow our bank to become a leading player in Nigeria with a strong presence across the continent, adopting best practice in everything we do. Our mantra for success is simple, speed, service, and security. Those who shape tomorrow strive for and demand perfection. At Access Bank, our service culture of speedy response and drive for excellence is the blueprint for creating customer experiences that will echo for generations. Come, let's work together By the mid-1970s, Winnie Mandela was free but banished by the apartheid regime from her home in Soweto to the Orange Free State. But she was jailed again and again. And through the 1980s, the South African government thought it could hold back the tide of cause for democracy by suppressing unrest and the riots in which thousands of black people died. Would not wish to see that again. The bloodbath we went through collecting our children's bodies from the street because they dared oppose the African. It was images like these that honed world opinion against the South African government and it was inevitable the apartheid regime would collapse. Nelson Mandela had been moved to a jail on the South African mainland from Robben Island and then this historic moment with millions watching across the globe. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. Mrs. Winnie Mandela next to him, waving to the crowds, hand in hand, they leave the Victor Fister prison. Officials, marshals of the National Reception Committee trying to get the people and a salute from Mr. Nelson Mandela, his wife Winnie, greeting the people outside the fences of the Victor Verstaat prison. That is the man who the world has been waiting But where to did see. Winnie fit into the new South Africa? Almost three decades after her husband's release, the couple were divorced already. And she found herself in front of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, investigating atrocities during the uprisings of the 1980s and in particular the murder of activist 14-year-old Stompy Moketsi by a vigilante group she controlled. And there was her endorsement of the so-called necklace killings where petrol-soaked burning tires were put around the necks of informers. Winnie in 1986. I am back with you where I belong. This is now the right time to take your country we shall use the same language the Boers are using against us. They know only one language, the language of the Kaspers. We have no, no arms. We have stones. We have boxes of matches. With our necklaces, we shall liberate this country. Many South Africans were shocked, and one of Winnie's former neighbors remembers the madness of the times. I sympathized a lot because I, I, I had seen firsthand what she did for us and in the community. Now, to me, that was a black mark. That incident was a black mark. And uh, I would say to, to, to an extent, I was hoping against hope that the accusations are false, are wrong. 
DCC. But then, as everybody knows, she went to court and she was found guilty for this and that and couldn't be too good for her image. Winnie's apology before the Truth and Reconciliation Committee seemed forced and insincere. I fully agree with that. And for that part of those painful years when things went horribly wrong and we were aware of the fact that there were factors that led to that, for that I am deeply sorry. Certain leading ANC leaders distanced themselves from Winnie. It was as if her era as a black South African heroine was fading fast. In her latter years, dogged by ill health, she campaigned for the poor and dispossessed as usual. But even Nelson Mandela sacked her as a minister. Her days of glory were over. In one of her final interviews, she reflected on life but laughed off the title she earned as Mother of the Nation. Felt uh, it, it was referring to me alone. I, I considered all the women uh, who have sacrificed uh, their lives. Uh, it, uh, my age group, I, I consider all of them as mothers of the nation. I never thought and never claimed that it is my personal title in any way because I, was, I didn't give it to myself. It's, it's the masses of this country. I threw stones with uh, when we were fighting and uh, I'm one of those who engaged the enemy physically as well and very proud of it that I did what I did underground and I was part of those who brought down uh, the regime. So I don't really mind whatever they call me. Sometimes that mother of the nation is translated negatively. I don't really give a damn. What is important is the fact that uh, I am one of those who brought them down and I walk tall about that and I'll do it again. South Africa